Hello everyone, welcome back to this next part of the series. Um, I thought uh, instead of kind of explaining um, subdivision modeling as I was building it, um, because there's a lot of repetitive movements such as extruding a face and pulling faces out and combining surfaces, it might get a bit uh, repetitive and hard to kind of model it while I did that. So I thought I'd come back after the car was complete and talk through some of the um, topology techniques and showing you some of the reasons why I put um, polygons uh, in certain places and how I approach uh, subdivision modeling uh, for a vehicle like this. Uh, so let's get into it. Uh, during part two, um, when I started to do subdivision modeling, I had talked about this fender and kind of um, creating uh, polygons that flow around um, you know, featured details, you know, kind of like this fender opening here, you know, and a wheel arch is, is actually a perfect example of it, where you've got the polygons flowing uh, in a nice curve like that. Um, some other examples of that are around the headlight. I kind of encircle the details to capture their, their character edge. So you can see this row of polygons that comes all the way around the headlight there. And then all these polygons start to flow into it you know, from that fender there and the top of the hood and fender and even down to the bumper. Um, that's kind of how I, I approach a lot of these detail areas. You can even see it in the, the hood vent here. You've got this row of polygons that comes around um, and creates the shape to follow that detail. Even in here, this opening, you've got these coming around it like that. So I try and start with those areas and kind of build into them and build off of them, like down here, you know, establishing that character line will help set the boundary for some of those areas. And then you can start building, you know, polygons between it. Um, that's, that's kind of like an overview of how I start to approach these detail areas. A bigger example of that would even be this window opening here, right? You know, you've got all the polygons from the door and body side coming up, mostly up. These ones I kind of tuned that way. But if you look at, at the body side, you know, between the wheels, um, this is kind of a different example because it's got this vent that kind of cuts that out. But typically a body side will come, you know, straight between the wheels and then you'll be able to create a nice, you know, body that comes up into the um, window opening border, uh, sometimes the, you know, the belt line through here. Uh, so you can see that's how I've laid these polygons out, like this row here, this row here, all these ones coming up. Oops. You know, and then they start to, so they start to capture the shape of this here. Um, I don't typically build directly into a glass plane. Um, a lot of times we'll be given, or I'll be given a, a glass plane because a glass plane is pretty much a um, big section of a, a cylinder. Actually, you can think of it more like a barrel. You know, it'll have one section like this, and then it'll have another section that comes through it like this. So it's usually trimmed out of a surface like that, right? And then your your glass border or your window opening here will be kind of trimmed out of that, right? Depending what that shape's gonna be. So it's very rare that I'll actually build from the body side up into the glass. Uh, what I did here was build this separate after I built this ledge here off of this opening. So you won't necessarily have, you know, um, edge loops that come all the way up the body side, up the glass, and then into the roof, uh, just because the shape of the roof here is gonna be completely different from here. A lot of times this is very flat, um, so it is kind of easy to, to kind of hide polygons into. You know, you start, might you might add a couple more rows, right? But by the time you get up to the, the rail here, the cant rail, you won't need this many faces. Right, you can get away with a lot less to create, you know, the tension point and the curvature you want that comes back this way. Uh, so, I like to build the border uh, around the glass. If I'm given the glass plane, it's a lot easier to do. Uh, but for this model, it was a sketch model, so I just used, 
you know, my sketch curve that I had drawn out and then duplicated um, to create this inner line for that cant rail. And then I just made a surface between those two and started branching off down from the from the A pillar and the uh, C pillar here, you know, into this rear fender and side panel. Um, and for this, I'm also not really worrying about door cuts at this point. Uh, typically, those are kind of put on after they're trimmed into the surface. You know, if you look at the, the clay modeling process, you know, everything's built as one continuous surface, you know, to really get a nice highlight that tracks through. And then cut lines are treated as a graphic on top of that. Um, you know, in typical subdivision modeling, you'll see people recreating, you know, vehicles that already exist, right? They'll use blueprints that they're given every every view from and they'll they'll model in those door cuts in polygons um, you can do that uh, for this sort of activity though where you're kind of exploring new shapes new forms i completely disregard them and those are something that can be uh, projected on and trimmed in later you know during the visualization phase with this model i just kind of created them with curves uh, just to kind of indicate where they are but they're not really necessary at this stage um, so yeah, so that's that's pretty much how I like to approach uh, subdivision modeling is 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 finding my boundaries and building around them, right? Like this here, and then figuring out the typology, you know, to create some of these these uh, detailed areas. Something like this fender is a little tricky because you you know you want to be able to control this fillet here, the size of this radius you know, and be able to control the tension in that spot. So you really, you want to have enough points coming down to it to do that, but you don't want to overwhelm it, right? You don't want to have maybe even another two, because then you can start getting a lot more wobbles and it's a lot more to keep control of. And then when you're trying to come up into the fender, you know, if you had one more here, you could kind of come up and branch here into the wheel opening, but then you have to come here. Maybe you're going to add another one there. Um, you know, if you had another one coming through here, that's going to add more over this fender, which could be okay if you really want to control that <clears throat> that surface really, really tightly. But again, it's more points to control. So it's kind of uh, finding that happy place between too many and too little points. You know, the same thing can be said about <clears throat> this this rocker area here, right, getting this light catcher shape you can see that the 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 edge edge flow for this body side is kind of up you know and that's kind of stemmed from this uh, character line here um, but then you want to kind of start to come down with it and start to flatten it out make it a little more horizontal and then kick it down so you can kind of capture this shape in here again that's just controlling the edge flow and kind of putting the polygons in a place where you can make that shape. You can see that these ones here on the body side are really far apart because you want this to be smooth through here. But as they come down here, it's more of a localized point where they're really close together and that's to create this tight shape. You know, and that's something you can control by editing the surface, grabbing those points and pulling them farther apart, right? You can really s start to soften out that transition maybe even a little further into the body here. Or you can make it tighter. Let's just undo that. Even up this body side, right? You can make these closer together and get this to be really tight higher up. If that's what you're looking for, right? So now you can see that that transition is more of like a, a tight fillet versus a, a really big blended out, blown out surface through here. You know, again, that's that's up to you while you're building it to kind of decide um, what the shape is going to do. Um, but that's how you do it is by manipulating these points and kind of laying them out uh, in a logical fashion where where they'll be uh, in, a, in a spot where you can start editing, you know, these surface details and stuff. You know, just like this character line here, you know, I built that and defined it with the curve. And you saw in, in part two where I built, you know, this big surface through here. And then another one through here and then just join them and that was the start of here i had talked about maybe you know even cutting 
um, some more details in this area and, and kind of changing the flow of this, the topology here. I ended up not needing it because I was able to add, or I was able to modify the, the loops up here to run straight through um, and then fade out here with this, with this crease line, um, but then also start to capture this kind of break at the top of the, you know, the, the, um, the fender arch over here. Uh, this is an interesting area. This, uh, what do they call star point or, or pole? It's where you have more than four edges running into it. Um, this, I guess the star point is, is usually five, but it could be anything above four really. And the reason you'll get these, you usually get them here or somewhere in, in the rear fender and somewhere over the front fender is because you have polygons coming this way or, or edges and loops running this way. You've got them coming up down the fender and then also even vertically this way right so that's where you'll get all of them coming down here because you've got a lot of different loops merging and trying to change directions all in one location so i typically find that i see them here and in a similar location here uh, depending it all does it does vary but most of the time it's in those two locations uh, sometimes as well uh, is in the front over here uh, this one's a little um, less typical as well because i built in the uh, the headlight bucket and 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 had this as a separate piece um, but sometimes you'll you'll run into the same thing where you have um, edges coming down from the hood but then you have to make a, a direction change around the bumper so it's always the front corners that and the rear corners uh, as well where you have a lot of design change you're going to run into the, uh, a lot more problems with uh, your polygon flow because you've got you know character lines doing all sorts of stuff depending on the on the design right um, they're, they're all going to vary uh, actually you can see an example of that here where you've got five um, edges coming into one uh, and that's because you've got them coming from the hood but then i also created this border around the headlight right so you're going to run into it and then you're going to have a lot of stuff branching off of it you know, to start moving in different directions across the hood. Uh, so those are things to watch out for. Um, they're not necessarily bad, you know, depending where they land, um, they could be not noticeable. Uh, sometimes I do notice um, some slight reflection hiccups in it. I think that's just the nature of, of that position. But, you know, with a little, a little smoothing and a little fine tuning, you can, you can get it to look pretty good. And again, you know, this is not an A-class surface, right? This is a, a sketch model or a design model that, you know, might go to, it might go be milled in clay to get a look at it, or or a, a, maybe you're making a small uh, scale model or something where a lot of that stuff won't be noticeable. Um, but for this exploration phase, I think it's perfectly acceptable. You know, even, you know, five-sided surfaces like in here, and even three, you know, triangles, they're not necessarily bad either. You know, this one, I wanted to capture some curvature through here, right? So I added these loops that run like this, but when I came up to here, I didn't necessarily want them to carry through because I had, you know, this character line here that, that merged with this one up here. So I just ended it here, right? So now I've got a one, two, three, four, five-sided surface it doesn't look that bad at all. Um, one of the reasons is because it's kind of in this, this negative area. So I can kind of just start pulling it down. And then by the time it gets up here, it's just washed out. Um, you know, same with this here, this is actually, it is four sided, right? But it's one way to terminate it, you know, into this triangular shape, but still keep it four sided, right? You just, you know, maybe, maybe you, you had these two here and you're like, Oh, I don't know what to do. You can just use the uh, cut tool, come up and leave it like that. And that's what I did with this and it turned out okay. You can also, I mean, it's a little, it's a little funky, but you can come in and just tune it a little bit, right? That'll start to carry that negative a little bit through there. But again, it's not really noticeable. And for this, this level model, it's, it's totally fine. Um, there's also going to be problems around the A pillar and the touchdown. Uh, this one, again, this will vary a lot depending on 
you know, the design you've got going on for this, uh, this mil maybe it's a mirror flag location. Um, and it depends if you're even, you know, hooking this, this a pillow around here. This one just happened to work with the design where it was okay that, you know, it gave it a little fillet. Let me unsmooth this. Right. So I was just able to, to build this right into it. And, and just by chance it, it created a fillet through here uh, because you've got this point right here and it's smoothing between this one over here, right? So you're going to get that arc like that. Um, that's perfectly fine. You know, in, in, in an area like this, that helped uh, by adding this loop here just to get this to tighten up through here. And then I decided, I think the original sketch line was just one smooth curve like that, but I, I wanted a little tension in this area. So when I originally built this, I think this point was somewhere back here. Right, these were kind of evenly spaced like that. So you can see that I'd smoothed that out just by moving those points. But if I wanted to create a little more tension and a little snap to this, you know, this belt line here, I could just start moving those points closer together. Right? Maybe it's down a little bit. And you can see how it creates that that tension in that spot. Uh, same in the same in the rear, right? You've got these points close together here, maybe too close. They might be on top of each other. Which ones are which? That's that one, right? I could just grab these two, move them a little further apart and you get a bigger radius, right? So, and then you, or you can move them higher. You can, you or you grab them and change, you know, change the shape of that, that window opening pretty quickly, you know, so the, that's kind of the, the, the nice thing about subdivision modeling is you just start grabbing points and move them around. Um, you know, you will cause some issues, right? With some pinching or maybe something gets a little out of whack and doesn't look right. You know, you just got to spend a minute kind of moving the points around. So I, I kind of get everything in position and take a look at it and then really start adjusting points. Like here, once I move those points forward, this looks a bit tortured as far as the topology is concerned. So maybe I'll just start to kind of pull these ones forward as well and just start to kind of evenly spread things out. Um, and that, that way you'll get kind of less bumps and kind of weird undulations uh, that you do tend to get with subdivision modeling um, just because you're always kind of pushing and pulling points. That's where I kind of like doing the, the big patches in one surface, you know, the, like especially these body side ones because then you can really kind of control that highlight and then just convert it to subdivision and start branching off of it, uh, you know, just like the hood here, right, just to get a nice controlled big surface. Even, even I didn't do it too much in, in the fender here, but um, even something like that, depending on your design, maybe you're just building one surface from here, you don't have this, this detail in there. Um, a lot of it's going to depend on the, the design of the car as well. You know, this is a sports car, so things are a bit exaggerated the wheels are a little too big um the cabin's small it's it's not super realistic but it's not out of realm of possibilities you know with some fine tuning and reproportioning it could be you know a pretty realistic car um this is actually a good example of kind of having a lot of points you know i probably could have gotten away with um actually just having one clean curve coming off of here under the headlight and then down, right? Because I don't actually need this one or this one. So these two can be merged to a single one. And that actually would have helped this. I'm only noticing this now after I look at it, um, where I actually do have this triangle here, but because it's on this underside of the surface and it's on a lens, it wasn't a real big deal because it's, it's not noticeable. It doesn't create any problems with the surface, you know? So that's an example of kind of you know, reevaluating your work. Um, and you're going to spend a lot of time thinking about the topology, right? Like how are things flowing together? You know, yeah, here's a, here's another triangle, right? Because I didn't want to carry both these loops around because then I would have added and had to add another one here. And there's already a few, you know, on this wheel opening that would have started to, you know, to tighten it up. And I would have had to play with a few more just to get this um, to be smooth. It's, it's not perfect right now, but you know, that's an example of that. Uh, so yeah, just always, always look at your topology and reevaluate how you how you approach it. Um, yeah, I've got another, um, uh,
star position there because you've got all these pieces coming in together and branching out. But again, it's kind of on a relatively flat surface, um, so it's not super noticeable. Uh, the cabin was pretty much just one big sheet um, or one big surface that I that I made and then just cut you know these pieces out that one um, that was in the time lapse so it might be harder to see uh, but let's see I'll just smooth this up right so that was trimmed out and then I I, I uh, added loops you know this direction and then extruded this whole boundary down just to create this fillet you know when it's smoothed and that's pretty much around the entire roof I did the same thing on the rail here and then just creased that edge so that gives kind of a an idea that there might be a panel gap or maybe a molding through here that that runs along the length of that let's put that back down you know, and then uh, that also kind of gives me the ability to kind of adjust the height of, of the uh, the glass there and, um, you know, show maybe there is some sort of construction step through here, right, where the glass comes together with the roof there. Um, the rear, I really didn't put too much effort into this. Um, I'd actually like to revisit this this design, I think, just for the sake of this video, I kind of, kind of just rushed through it. Um, so uh, this is actually quite a lot of edges that are coming vertically here. So it's a lot more to control. I could probably do with just to capture this surface alone. You could do with half that amount. Um, but then you know you run into into these areas here where you know you need to add two points close together just to kind of get this sharp angle. Um, so these are some of the areas that you'll run into with subdivision modeling where it's a bit tricky because you want to cut in a hole, but you have to add more geometry and more loops to kind of do that. Where in traditional NURBS modeling or even clay modeling, you just build one big surface and then, you know, trim that trim that bit out. Uh, so these are things to kind of watch out for. You know, cutting in details are, are going to be tricky and you're going to have um, some interesting topology going on uh, just to do that. This taillight is is actually pretty um, simple because I just stuck it in this hole, you know, just intersects there. Um, so I didn't really have to think about building uh, too complex of a topology around it. Um, again, I'd like to revisit this at some point, but that's what I got for this. And, and for the sketch model, that's the whole point. You build something you think is okay, you revisit it, you take a look at it again and, and rework it, right? That's the design process. You know, put it away for a couple weeks, come back to it, and see if you still like it. Um, that's that's typically what I do. I've got many models that I'm going to revisit at some point. You know, it just takes time to do that. Uh, this front, um, yeah, so I actually just built, you know, this border here that was with the sketch line. And then uh, I, I explained it in the other video where how I just separated these two parts. So that's why there's actually um, this loop here. And this loop here is because when I was originally modeling it, they were connected, so it actually created a, a big fillet through there. Um, realistically, this one probably doesn't need to be there. If I delete that, it's not going to change much, right? You still get the same shape through that. Um, you could maybe a little less, it maybe it gives you a little less control down there, uh, but that's that's not really an area too critical to the design, right? This this big picture is there. Um, that might help you fine-tune some areas in there. Um, this one actually is a little more critical because it helps create this this fillet um, in this area here. Uh, and then again, I'm just capturing these you know these hard edges with with a creased line. Uh, one thing you do want to pay attention to is down here um, to get oops to get a, a creased here or a, or a sharp angle here. I did it on this inner uh, blackout. I, I missed it on this. Is you just want to make sure you crease both edges around it, and that tells it to make this point sharp. And I'm just noticing I must have missed those two edges there. So that's all nice and creased. Uh, it's probably the same thing here. No, I must have done it on this one. But like on this point here, 
right? If you if you're if you're really looking at this and you notice that that's round, just come in and crease them. Um, I'm not sure why it's done that way. Uh, that's a good question for the devs, but because um, in in most software that's that's always just a, a hard point in subdivision modeling. I guess it depends on the algorithm they're using for it. Um, yep. So I did it there as well and there as well. So just something to keep an eye on. Um, what else am I missing? Yeah, so I think a, a big overview, right? You're always going to have, you can kind of separate your car into planes, right? Your top of the car, for the most part, excluding the window, right? You're going to have edge loops coming up and over the vehicle from front to back. That's pretty typical. You'll start to get changes here in the hood, depending on the details. Um, but then you'll also have between, at least be from the, the center of the wheel arch, they'll all pretty much travel side to side as well. They'll start to change around the window, but pretty much from here, most of the time, unless you have a big hole or something, you know, your, your, your loops will travel horizontal across the hood into the fender. If you look at the body side, like I was saying before or earlier, between the wheels, typically 90% of the time, unless you're doing something with a vent or, or a big intake, your edges are going to travel front to back from wheel arch to wheel arch, and then vertically from the ground plane or your rocker up to at least your window opening. Let's make this a different color, right? Up to your window opening here. All right. This is a very basic construction of it. And then over the roof as well, they'll most likely travel just side to side. But again, these are the areas you'll you'll have some transitions usually. And then depending on your rocker shape, like if you've got um, something more extreme from this than this, like maybe there's a character line that comes up like this, right? Your your flow coming off the wheel arch are going to all want to tend to do that as well. So at some point you'll have to either come rearwards with them, but depending what your rear fender is doing, that might be impossible. So sometimes you'll get you know, these weird areas here where there's like a, a triangle or something or like, yeah, something odd going on. Actually, these are actually doing that. But that's probably what this would have done if I didn't have this vent here, right? If I had this body side coming this way through here, I'd have to figure something out like that. And then the rear, this rear actually wasn't too bad because I just came straight off the wheel arch to get this, you know, this break through here. So it's almost like just a big cone. And then everything's going to travel up and over, just like on your front fender there. Um, you'll also have a transition area for your pillars as they run into the body. Um, a lot of times, yeah, you're, you know, between your character line and your, your window opening, these lines will probably run and then break to the rear somewhere or start carrying through like this one. Again, you know, you just want to you know keep an eye on it. Um, I'm I always err on the side of less is more, um, just because the less points you have, the easier it is to manipulate things, especially when you're changing the design or or kind of going through different surface ideations. Uh, so I think that's that's really all I've got to say about this. You know, there's a lot to talk about. Um, with subdivision modeling, there's a lot of different approaches to it. Uh, but depending what you want to get out of it, you know, for this this early phase, this early design phase, this is how I approach it most of the time. Um, again, sometimes you can treat these graphics, even headlights and taillights, you can trim them in later. You know, so maybe maybe you do have like a smooth surface that just comes like this, right? And this can be treated as one one big surface and then trim in the detail later. Um, it's really up to you. Uh, so I think 
that's it for for this 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 video um, I hope this was beneficial and uh, it kind of gave you a good overview um, there's a couple uh, videos that I, I found a long time ago that I'll link in the description that kind of give a, a really good kind of basic um, description of subdivision modeling which I think will help you understand edge loops and polygon flow and, and all that sort of thing um, so yeah thanks for watching this and we'll see you next time